said, excrement. I didn't know what it was. The engineer said it was really great. I didn't know what it was. So I go trucking back to the headquarters company and I make this appointment with the engineer. I said, okay, you guys really set me up. What the H is section modulus. And they said, don't you know? I said, obviously I wouldn't be asking if I knew and if I really knew I could have probably sold the motor to this contractor. They said, it keeps that frame rigid so that in a hundred feet of leveling going down a road, you only deviate a quarter of an inch in a hundred feet. Imagine how much money that's going to save when you start putting down asphalt or concrete or whatever you're surfacing with. Bang, now I'm armed. Now I've got a benefit contract. So I went back and I met him again and I said, okay, I said, I've got an answer to the question. When I told him, he said, oh my God, without me saying anything, he said, a quarter of an inch and a hundred feet? I said, yeah. He says, I can save so much money on concrete and asphalt. Now, Sonny, you're talking sense to me. So, you've got to have a benefit. Motor rare story, breath mints, I mean, you buy breath mints, not because you want candy, you buy breath mints for social acceptance. What's the benefit? So you've got to understand what does your customer want or need, how do you solve the problem better than anybody else, and that's what your elevator pitch answers. That's the key to the elevator pitch. Now, here's an interesting one. Remember I told you about WIFM? There's only seven things you can do for someone. There's only seven things. Make the money, that's cool. You get my attention with that. You can save me money, i.e., the old contractor and his road grader, motor grader. You can save me time, and God knows I would pay for that right now with all the activities and things that are going on. You can make me feel secure. You know, kind of Maslow's hierarchy of needs that you probably took in freshman psychology. You can make me feel secure. You can make me feel like I have money so I'm more secure or physically I'm more secure or whatever. But you can do that for me. You can reduce my stress. Boy, that would be good. I'd pay for something that would help reduce stress. You can make someone feel good, either psychologically or physically. And you can make them look good. For some of us, making us look good is a little tougher than others, but Nevertheless, it's possible. So those are the seven things that you can do. Those are the seven things that are going to be in the What's In It For Me radio station. You don't want to try to incorporate all seven of those in your elevator pitch. But if you understand your customer, or even if you don't know who the person is, but if you've got your elevator pitch geared toward one or two of these kinds of things, what can you do for me? Just like I said to you all earlier, I can provide you all these services to help you be successful entrepreneurs and I manage funds that allow you to get seed money to run your business. So what can I do for you? Well, I can reduce stress, make you feel good, help you make money, maybe save money, I don't know. Save time and learning things the hard way. But I can deliver a result that has value to you, it has benefits to you. So those are the seven things. Think about those as you build it. Characteristics, answers, who you are and what you do, what problem or opportunity do you solve, how do you solve it, and I told you how successful I have been in the past. And you want to tell someone how successful your idea has been in the past. Now, with a startup, when you're pitching an idea the first time, you're not going to have any success necessarily. But you need to build that kind of comment, and we will be successful because, boom, 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 boom. We've got the best management team. We've got great resources. We have all this experience, so we know what we're doing is going to be successful. So let's wind it down with this. What did we do first? Intrigue the listener, capture their, their curiosity, stimulate the curiosity, but put a hook out there. Something that gets you interested in that first seven seconds. 
start with a question or a current event, a story that people can relate to. So what current events are taking place right now that a young entrepreneur might have a solution to? What's happening that we can all identify with? Anything? The election. So, I do political research. No, we start this way. Political research shows that there are three critical states in the United States that are going to be in play in this coming election. Three places. I've got software that will allow you, Mr. Politician, to focus exactly on who in those three states you're most likely to be able to influence. Wow. You don't think I'd have somebody's attention if I told a political strategist that? You bet. You bet. It's good to stay abreast of what's taking place in the world around you because that can help set you up with that opening statement. And, and I sit here, and this is, this is true. You've got to tailor it to suit who you are and what you're about. I can tell you the elements to put in but I can't really put all the words in your mouth. I don't, wouldn't want to. Because it's your story, it's your life, it's who and what you're about. So be flexible with it. And perhaps you need to have more than one. You might have two or three elevator pitches focused on a slightly different audience that you may encounter. Let's suppose for our young engineers, you guys decide not to be entrepreneurs, but you want to go to work for a company that's very entrepreneurial in nature. And you step on the elevator one day as an aspiring, rising young star in the corporation. And God, guess who's on the elevator? The vice president for technology in your company. You're going to no, you're going to say to him, I've found a solution to this particular problem that we've been fighting with for two years. Or I've got a product that's going to allow us to do this in the marketplace. And he's going to say, who are you? And you're going to say, I'm so and so. I work for such and such a boss down in this area of the company. And I'd like to have more of your time to talk to you about this. Your elevator pitch. You're not trying to pitch a business. You're not trying to pitch to get money. But that is an incredibly valuable opportunity to make a pitch. And so you need to be prepared with these kind of things no matter what you're doing. You're going to meet a potential employee someday if you're running your own business. You need to have a strong pitch to say, here's what we are, here's what we do, boom. Would you like to work? So everybody in life needs some elevator pitch. How many of you guys and gals ever go to a bar? I know some of you aren't old enough to go to bars. Some of us are too old to go to bars. You'll do this in life. Right? Too young to go, then you're too old to go. Well, no. Life just goes in this funny cycle, bell-shaped curve. You need an elevator pitch to go to a bar, believe me. You see some attractive person that you'd like to make a connection with, this one's in Hong Kong. Hey, honey, what brings you to Hong Kong? And she looks at this crotchety old guy beside her and she says, he did, I'm his mistress. Oh, sorry, solved that problem. No elevator pitch would have worked that night. Unless I had as much money as the old dude that sailed her in. So, doesn't have to be the same for everybody, but develop your elevator pitches. They will serve you well. What elements do you put in there? I know I've got one military, ex-military guy. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> Use language at a sixth grade level. Don't try to dazzle somebody with your brilliant command of the English language. You're not trying to get a job as a Shakespearean critic. Just keep it simple. A lot more memorable. Short and focused. Make it easy to understand. Kill the buzzwords. There are so many buzzwords, and you guys are subjected to them by faculty members all the time. 
we need to implement a synergistic strategy in order to create what? To create meaningful alliances. Okay, bullshit. Well, yes, it is. Just use simple, plain, easy to understand words. Drop the buzzwords. Remember to add some greed-inducing comments. You've got to track what's in it for me. Make it irrefutable. I said to you all, we have established 12 student-owned companies through activities that I've been involved with here at UT. I, it may be more. I don't know how many students went on and left and started a business. Not necessarily what they talked about here, but it was a business that went on to be successful. Keep it clear, concise, compelling, and convincing. Four C's. Clear, concise, compelling, and convincing. You bang. You've done it. Talk about irrefutable. Irrefutable. Some evidence that suggests that you've been successful, that you've done what you said you were going to be able to do. Let me, let me turn the light out here. So, For example, I was talking about, excuse me, Jeremy, can you shut this whole thing down here? Uh, I was talking about meeting someone, for example, in the elevator, if you're an engineer, if you're working for a big company. Irrefutable might be, we've tested this idea 10 times, and it's worked every single time. That's the kind of thing you want to try to put in there. Because at that point, you start to establish credibility with you and with your idea, or with your pitch. And so that's a nice way to kind of close the thing out. Hey, and it works. Hey, my business works. Hey, I've delivered this, I've delivered that. Whatever you decide to do. So. Any other questions? Yes? What were the C's again? Clear, concise? Clear, concise. Compelling and now you've got me going here. Let's see. That's okay. I've got it up here in notes too. When you're not an expert in computers, remember, paper's been around since the Egyptians. Of course, my, my, my children used to say to me, do you still use a rock and a chisel? No. Clear, concise, compelling, and convincing. Clear, concise, compelling. Irrefutable, does that go back to like a toothbrush saying nine out of ten dentists recommend this? Or uh, yeah, that's, that's like irrefutable. irrefutable. If you've really got that, if nine out of ten dentists say this is a great toothbrush, just an adjectives, I guess. Yeah, you, you, they believe it. You know, I mean, people would tend to believe that. So you throw like statistics, like some of You do like a survey, and now that survey. Yeah, so it's another one. If you if you don't have a business that you in fact started, but you've got a good idea and you've done some primary research, you could say, out of a thousand people that I've surveyed, 760 said, yes, we'll buy that product. Wow. You've done the work, you've done the primary research, that gets pretty good. When you can cite statistical primary research, now all of us will do secondary research as you start to evaluate an idea the first time. But you need to migrate that from secondary to primary, where you're talking to real people, you're getting real reactions. There's a couple of books out right now. One that I can't remember who wrote it talks about if you ask 50 people, would you buy my product, and 30 of them say, yeah, that's, that looks really interesting to me, you've probably got an idea that's got some legs. If 10 say, yeah, we might buy it, you probably may well throw that idea out, refine it, present it better, or, or something. So, yes, sir. Did you say you're a judge in the competitions? I do not judge. Okay. I do not judge. So, if and we wanted your help? I yeah, I, I, will, I would help. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll be happy to. I used to, I tried early on to conduct some classes in the evening about a business plan, and I found that they really weren't very well attended, and so I said, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it. But I'll guide you, I'll answer questions, I'll guide you to reference material that's very good. 
I teach out of a book called Business Plans for Dummies. And I say to my students, this is not an indictment of your intellect, but I find this book to be particularly good because it asks all of the timeless questions that need to be asked. Quite frankly, you're going to take a lot, of, a lot of textbooks here when you're in college. Throw the damn things away when you get out. Or sell them if you can. I haul them around the world with me. I haul them from, from uh, East Tennessee to Peoria, Illinois, to Hong Kong, to Singapore, back to Hong Kong. And on that back to Hong Kong move, I looked at all these textbooks, which were getting very long in the tooth at that point, and I said, you know, these would be better off in a Hong Kong landfill. And that's where they are today. <laughs> Business Plans for Dummies is a like that. It asks those questions that are timeless. Who is your customer? What do they want? What drives their behavior? Who's the competition? How good are they? How good am I compared to them? All of those questions that you need to think about that go through your mind. And, uh, and that's a great book. It really is. It just, it just has dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of questions. Yes, sir. So if we wanted your help or another faculty member, should we be at a point where we would have a patent already? No. Or no, not necessary. Yeah. Now, in fact, I, you know, I had some students come to me today and tell me about a business idea, and I said, I'm sorry, that's really dumb. And here's why I think it's dumb. I won't tell you it's dumb and just walk out of the room. But as a young entrepreneur, as any entrepreneur, not a young one, as any entrepreneur, you're going to have people tell you that's a really dumb idea. Now, if you're really convinced that it's a good idea, then push ahead and prove it. I told Joey the idea was dumb the first time he presented it to me. Really? Yeah. Said, That's dumb, Joey. I don't think it's going to work. I don't see how you can make it work. So, but you find something to convince me otherwise. And he did. This is a cousin who I had in class and uh, who has started they're beta testing now. They're really starting to make, get some traction. They won two business plan competitions here. They won a business plan competition downtown. They've recently had a valuation, estimated valuation for their company of a million and a half dollars. They've got $50,000 in investment. But I told him, the idea's dumb. And he told me, Mr. Graves, bullshit. It's a good idea, and I'm going to prove to you it's a good idea. It's fine. If you're that determined, you've got that kind of passion, prove it to me. Passion is what it takes. God, I'll invest in passion and a team anytime. You've got to want it. Now, you may have to change the direction you're going, three, four, five. Jake, that spoke to you all two weeks ago now, was it? What did he say? 22 different iterations of that backpack, that strap pack, before he felt like he could go to market with it. You've got to be committed. You've got to have passion for what you do. So, if you all would please excuse I've got another engagement with Holly Green's class tonight yet, so it's been a pleasure being with you. All of you can find me online at UT. Uh, I used to give out dozens of business cards until my students and others that I contacted with made such fun of me, and I ran out of business cards, so I haven't gotten any new ones printed up yet. Anyway, it's been great. Let me pull out the stuff here. Uh, for anybody that want to be involved in leadership, any of y'all are involved that weren't here, stick around after we'll talk to you. And also, um, we have these. These are for our member directory on our website. Um, after you're a paying member, we'll put a little, has a couple questions about you, help you network and get your name out there a little more. That's all I got you, Evan. Yeah, we've got a few things. Um, pay your dues. Uh, we're going to have pizza after this. We're going to go to Sergeant Pepperoni's. I've got four spots in my car if anybody wants to come. And next week, we're going to have a business attorney come talk to us about legal challenges you can have. Um, start with a startup specifically. And with that, we're going to conclude the third meeting of the semester. <laughs>